What's going on everyone? Welcome back to Better Biomed. Today, I'm at NASA and we are looking to find early examples of medical technology because they used to have to monitor the telemetry of these guys when they're way up in space and it's really fascinating when you start looking at the technology that they had. We got spacesuits, we've got spaceships. I'll, I'll, I'll walk you through really quick. But uh, you can see here's one of the suits that's behind me and underneath would be a telemetry system. But uh, we also have over here one of those suits. And from this one right here, it's a cooling suit. How cool is that? Literally. <laughs> so it's got uh, liquid cooling and you can see the valve where it connects and it goes through different channels, kind of like a hypohypothermia unit. It uh, constantly fluctuates the person's body accordingly. So uh, I'm gonna flip this camera around and I'm gonna show you, it's gonna be a little bit loud in here, but I'll show you a little bit of what we're seeing uh, here in NASA. All right guys, so you can see we've got the cooling suit, which is pretty crazy. You can see your body can overheat at negative 300 degrees Fahrenheit. That's wild. That's absolutely wild. So this is the suit. It's got the airlocks. It's got the helmet. There's a whole bunch of other suits that are elsewhere. You can see over here, we've got one of the earliest liquid rockets. Oh, it's pretty cool. Very, very early. Explorer 1. How crazy. And take a look. It's a Mercury 9. And there would be a small human inside that. I wish I could show you guys scale. Uh, the base of it looks like it's about 6 foot tall. So... You'd have to be a very small human to get inside there, right? Pretty cramped. Wouldn't be able to move around very much. Up above me, <laughs> we've got another module. Wow, look at this. He's doing a spacewalk. That's wild. So there's two people, they would depressurize, open the, the doors, and do a quick spacewalk. Get back inside and then repressurize. That's wild. And also, that would be pretty scary because anything is not buckled down when you uh, depressurize, like all that stuff would just float out to space. <laughs> Hopefully, it's nothing that you need. There's a lot of cool space gear over here. Lost in space says uh, Astronaut Ed White opened the hatch of his Gemini 4 and floated out into the majestic panorama of low. Earth orbit, a spare thermal glove, just like this one, and drifted out the hatch after him. Exactly what I said would happen. Is if nothing strapped down, it would just walk on you. All right, so we have a rocket up above us. It's kind of cool. They go through some of the tech over the years. Let's see if we can show some examples. Let's see some of the Mercuries. They have. So much history here, guys. It's so cool. Dragon shoot bag. What the heck is that? A handheld maneuvering unit. So it used uh, compressed gases. Boy, you wouldn't have very much. You wouldn't have very much of uh, a charge on that guy. Looks like it's got a camera mounted on the top. I wonder how many minutes that would provide of um, exhaust. Piece of the heat shield from the Gemini. Anyway, it's an opportune time because right now there's not there's not too many people. You can see over here we've got an Apollo 17 command module. Space enough for three people inside it. Extremely thick doors. It's really dark in this room. They really set the environment. Let's see, there would be three people shoulder to shoulder in there. This is wild. Absolutely wild, guys. And over here, we've got a simulated moon setup. I 
really dig the chest mounted cameras. <laughs> Look at those cameras. That's wild. Their life support umbilicals. It's crazy. So he's taking a core sample right there. We've got the Lunar Rover. And it looks like we have another camera way over there. It's crazy. Wow. So anyway, guys, it's absolutely fascinating coming through, <clears throat> seeing examples of this early technology of what it used to take to keep people alive. It's almost all analog, uses latches, nozzles. <laughs> they used to use raw math that was manually calculated. It's so crazy. It's a thrust engine, Nikon cameras. Oh, we got collection tools, tools for collecting uh, lunar rocks. Very cool. Oh, one of those early cameras. Anyway, guys, I just wanted to show you real quick what's up. I'm over here, over by NASA. I'm, I'm doing a work, um, going through some ORs, checking out their uh, lights and booms. And since I'm in the region, this is on the other side of Houston, I figured let's stop off at NASA. Let's take a look and see what's going on over there because you really want to understand where we're going. You got to see where we've been. And this is like a perfect example of what it takes to get us to where we currently are. And if my history is correct, one of the earliest examples of space telemetry on uh, patient data would be Space Labs. That's how I got the name, Space Labs. Is That's the old myth. I don't know if that's true or not, but uh, that means the telemetry systems that are built in would have been designed and built by what became later as Space Labs, the company. Cool stuff. Anyway, guys, NASA, just thought you'd uh, appreciate a little bit of what's going on over here in Houston. Thanks for watching, guys.